Welcome everyone, I'm Sparkle. This is gonna be a one hour sort of general flow yoga class. So we're just gonna kind of touch in on a lot of different things, hips, shoulders, back. So yeah, let's get started. We'll start standing at the top of your mat with your feet hips width apart. And bend the knees a little bit. We're just gonna do a little shake. See if it can come from the tops of the shoulders and let the arms just be sort of hanging and shaking as a result. You can even bounce your heels a couple times on the ground. On your next inhale, you can press down through the legs, reach the arms up to the sky and exhale, fold. Interlace the hands behind your back and send the knuckles up and over. And then bending the right knee, inhale, stretch the left leg nice and long, pulling the left hip back and twist and turn, looking over your left shoulder up towards the sky. Lengthen the side ribs, both sides. Exhale, fold. So we're gonna flow like this back and forth with the breath, inhale. Turn and go up to the right as the left knee bends. And exhale. Back and forth a couple more times. Inhale, left. And just flowing with your breath. So it's more about the quality of the breath and the transition from a thinking place to a feeling place. So I love to use very simple, kind of repetitive flows at the beginning just to get us inside ourselves. Next time you exhale, release your hands. Step the right leg back. Bring the back knee down and walk your left foot wider so that both hands can fit on the inside of the front foot. And then we're gonna do a little stirring with the right hip. So making circles in this lunge. Reverse. So in some way we wanna connect all the sensation in the body to the breath. So the breath can be as long and slow and deep as possible here, just in a way that feels as if it can unwind the hips. And lifting the back knee, let's step forward and switch sides. So left leg back, knee down. So unwinding from the hips can be like exhaling from the hips or if you can think about emptying your hips as you breathe out. So the movement is just to sort of kind of stir and then you're breathing out what comes up or any tightness that you come across. Plant the hands. Let's step back to down dog. Bend the knees. So we're gonna do kind of like a low profile downward facing dog. So as you bend the knees, you go almost to a child's pose. It's very low, kind of like you're ducking under something. And then straightening the legs on an inhale. Let's try to do that dip into it two more times. So exhale, get really low. Inhale, coming out of it, stretching. One more time. All right, inhale to plank pose. The knees can come down first. I've been loving putting my knees down first. So feel free to join me in that. Lower, 
Roll the shoulder blades onto the back and inhale, Cobra. Let's take an extra breath here. And exhale, Child's Pose. Connect back to that very first thing we did, which is just a little bit of rocking or even like shaking that helped to settle. So do the same thing in child's pose here. Just shake or rock in a way that helps to knock off any of the, the scales or the sort of like lingering stress. Inhale, come up to hands and knees. Reach the left leg back and the right arm forward. Take a big breath, arching through the spine as you lift the arm and leg. And then on an exhale, pull the knee in. So the right hand goes to the left knee and tuck it in. See if you can bring it all the way to the forehead. We'll do a couple more like that. Inhale. And exhale. For those of you that are familiar with yoga, see if you can just bask in how simple this is and how it allows us to be more in a meditation of something that we're very familiar with. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. All right, and then straight into the other side, right leg back, left hand forward, arch. And exhale, round, drawing the knee in. And flowing like this. Take a approach that doesn't cut any corners on this breath. So as you breathe in and out, you're fully emptying and fully filling up, really luxuriating in your full capacity. One more time. All right, hands and knees, down dog. All right, this time we'll play with our arms and down dog. So from here, bend the elbows bringing the elbows almost towards the ground and then pull the elbows towards each other. The feeling is it's as if you had a block that you're squeezing between the elbows. Get really low and then one elbow at a time you can come down right into dolphin which is just down dog on the elbows. With the neck unwind. Press evenly, so the weight tends to go into the elbows, so actively press down through the palms, the forearms. And as you distribute the weight evenly through the elbows to the tips of the fingers, lift the thighs up and back behind you. Exhale, knees come down, sliding into Sphinx Pose. So the forearms can stay. Inhale, lifting up through the chest. A little rocking side to side here on the pelvis to help lengthen. And you can decide here. I really like to hang on to the outside edges of the mat and then lift the elbows up. So if this would be delicious for you, then don't let me, don't let me be in your way. So from here, as you press down through the thighs, scoop the low belly up. And wherever your hands may be, grip into what you've got under the hands and pull back to stretch the center of the heart more forward. Kind of like you're going to slide your body off the front edge of the mat. And exhale, lower. Inhale, hands and knees. And down dog. Inhale. 
Inhale, right leg to the sky. Down dog splits. Let's take a moment here. First, just shake out that top leg. So make sure to shake from the thigh all the way up so that the toes are just sort of loose. And then on an exhale, come forward. So plank pose as you bring the right knee to the forehead. Press down through the hands and lift the back ribs high to the sky. So the left knee can be on the ground like we did before if you need that, if you need a modification. Inhale, sweep the right leg back and up. Shake. Really slowing down the breath. Exhale, plank, press down, pull the knee in. One more like that. So inhale, it goes up and somatically we're shaking off the life gunk. Exhale to plank, press down, squeeze. And then from there, place the right foot between the hands, back knee comes down. And we'll do a low lunge, so arms to the sky. Exhale. Hands down, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, shift back, pyramid pose. Lift the toes on the front foot and imagine you've got a gas pedal underneath the, the front foot. So you're accelerating, ball of the foot into the earth, lengthen through the heart. Exhaling, softening the elbows. Let your spine flow a little side to side here in a way that feels instinctually good. Step back to down dog. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale. Plank, draw the knee in. Inhale, left leg goes up. Give some shaking. Thigh, shin, toes. Shake it off. Exhale, bring it in. Press the hands down. Lift the back of the ribs a lot. One more time. Inhale. We want it to feel like a release as you shake. Exhale, step through between the hands. Back knee down, arms to the sky. Exhale, pyramid pose. So hands land, lift up, stretch back. All right, just a little refinement. Lift the toes on the front foot and accelerate down through the front foot. Inhale, lengthen forward through the heart. And then exhale, softening through the elbows. So when the elbows soften, see if you can tap right into that sort of instinctual unwinding through the spine. In a side to side, slow, kind of breezy movement. Bending into the front knee. Let's step up to the front of the mat, flat back with the feet together, hands to shins, lengthen through the heart, and exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, chair. Palms press together overhead. Inhale, press the back of the head and the upper arms back at the same rate. Kind of like you're bringing the top third of this pose vertical. So the head is hovering right over the heart, wrists and elbows stacked right over the shoulders. Take a big breath in, maybe even go past vertical arching. And then exhale, fold, interlace the hands behind the back, send the knuckles up and over. Release the hands, take a deep breath in, lengthening. And then we'll step back to plank and lower all the way down. 
Those knees can land first, but keep the hips and the heart on the same track. So they're landing together. Roll the shoulders up and back, and let's do an inchworm here. So you can put the forehead down or even the chin, and then with the knees together, lift your hips, walking the knees in. So we'll get to this inchworm position with the hips up. From here, press down through the hands, roll the shoulders up and back, and we're gonna flow right into Cobra. So you just kind of sweep forward and up from the front of the waist to the heart, to the crown, to the sky. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right leg to the sky. And exhale, step through. Let's do warrior two. So sweep the arms. I love this one because it's like, could not be more generic of a pose, but it's never a dull moment, right? So reach the hands forward, lunge into the front thigh. On an inhale, straighten the front leg, arms up, palms connect overhead. And then we're gonna descend through the back knee, flexing the front toes and carefully lower, framing the uh, back foot or just inside the back foot, gazing forward. From here, if your back heel is off the ground, that's okay. If you can lower it and thread your left shoulder underneath the left knee, you can extend the, the left arm all the way back off the back edge of the mat and reach the right arm up to the sky. So you're opening up across the front of the chest. Good, now get into the subtle ways that the inhale can inflate, especially the right ribs here. So you're gonna breathe and fill up the back ribs, moving the top arm back in space more. Exhale, release the hands. Let's go back to a lunge at the front of the mat. Plant the left hand down. Step the front foot back about halfway on the long edge of the mat and we're gonna spin all the toes to the right, heels to the left and reach the right arm up to the sky. So side plank. Variation, take a deep breath, lift the hips a little higher as the top arm goes overhead. And then we're gonna slowly lower, right in this pose, left hip comes to the ground. So you'll take your time with it, settling the weight. Inhale, now get um, a sense of lightness and pr pride up through the sides of the heart, the sides of the throat. So you're really taking a second to grow into your power. Flex your right toes. Just for fun, let's take the right arm to the sky and then open the right arm back behind you. Kind of like you're going twisting, 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 reaching as far back. And you can really explore with this arm. That's the idea. To be explorative. If your hand gets close to the ground, you can put both hands down behind you, lift up through the heart, and then maybe, maybe, maybe you can lift through the hips like this. And we're just getting really creative here. So flex all 10 toes, lift up through the heart, lift up through the hips, press down through the outside edge of the right foot, lift the heart a little more, exhale, let it go. Let's unwind, so you're kind of cartwheeling all the way back to down dog. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. Take your time. Turn the back toes out. Here we go, glide into it. Basking in the simplicity, if you've done a yoga class before, chances are you've done this pose, but this is your most mature, the wisest warrior two for you yet. 
Inhale, straighten the front leg, arms to the sky, palms connect overhead. And then let's descend, center of gravity over the back leg. If you're taking your time to lower, the back heel can be on or off the ground. If you feel a stretch in your left leg and the inner thigh, the adductors, you're there. So from there, if you can thread your right shoulder underneath the right knee and shift your weight just right, you might be able to get the left arm to the sky. Now come back to the true fullness of the breath. Especially the inhale here, filling you up. Exhale, hands down. Let's shift back to a lunge. Take your time. We're gonna plant the right hand nice and sturdy and step the left foot to the outer edge of the mat and then turn the toes. So all toes will be pointing to the left and meet me in this variation of side plank for a moment. Left arm to the sky. Take the arm overhead and arch up, lifting through the chest. The most important thing is that we are prioritizing the breath so that we are doing deep work for the nervous system. So that's our guide so that we know that what we're doing is um, able to be processed. From there, slowly settling down onto the outside of the right hip. Stretch out through the both legs, really, and flex through the toes. Press down through the outer edges of both feet. Lift through the chest. And then this is our moment to just kind of fill up. It's as if you're trying to stand tall here, even though we're not at all standing. It's the feeling of it up through the crown, and then extend the arm all the way back just to find your wings. This is a great place to stop, a nice modification. If you can be even more playful, you might be able to rest the left hand back, both hands come down, and then turn your heart towards the sky, and then inhale, lift up. So this is sort of a variation of I guess it's like a reverse plank. So you're lifting up through the heart, press down through the outer edge of the left foot to really lift up. Lift everything that you can lift. Including at the center of the chest. See if you can puff up there. That can be the highest part of the pose. And exhale, release. Unwind, kick the left leg back. We're gonna float all the way down, laying on our belly. So just kind of dive in. Let's go back to what we did before, the inchworm. So the chin goes down or the forehead. Either way, roll the shoulders back. Knees come in, hips inch up. And we'll do a variation here. So bend the left knee, left foot goes to the sky. And then if we press down just right, we're going to see if it's possible to lift the right knee. So it's kind of like your right leg is in plank, or maybe you lift the leg up even more, and the right thigh lift, uh, lands on the left foot. So it's propped up like a kickstand. Big breath in, we're gonna flow right into Cobra from here. So just let your legs kind of unwind out of it and sweep up through the heart. Exhale, child's pose. A little shaking, a little shimmying out. And then other side when you're ready, hands and knees. I'm put in a little extra challenge. It's been a long time since I've done this, but the knees come together and we'll see if we can land in that knees, chest, chin position. 
You're going down and landing in the inchworm. From there, roll the shoulders back, bend the right knee. So the right foot is making a tray straight up towards the sky. As the knee presses down, lift the left knee, lift the left leg as the last piece, propping the thigh on the right foot. So you've got a big scorpion tail here going up through that top leg. Gazing forward with the gaze completely focused and relaxed. And we're going to inhale, sweep right back into that familiar place, the cobra. So inhale, both legs come down, sweep up, curling into the heart. And exhale, down dog. reach the right leg to the sky, exhale, step through between the hands, all right, we'll work into the hips a little bit more, turn the back toes out, and then keeping the front foot, in fact, let's repeat this piece, remember how we did pyramid pose as a gas pedal under the ball of the foot, so accelerate now down through the ball of the front foot, and then keep that, keep tracking the knee straight forward, We'll walk the hands over to the left. So the spine is flowing to the left. The inner thigh, the front leg, is still rolling towards the front of the room. Plant your right hand down under the heart, reach your left arm up to the sky. So we're in kind of a sideways triangle here. Your spine is flowing straight off to the left, but the legs are in a traditional and very conscious triangle pose with the front leg, knee tracking straight forward. You can even bend the knee to see where it really is. Exhale, plant the hands, put the left hand down, reach the right arm up to the sky. And let's do a regular triangle. So the hands come down with the right hand on the right shin or outside of the shin, reach the left arm up to the sky again. And now arch through the chest. You're making a big, long, spacious breath that traces from the front of the pelvis all the way up, send the top arm straight out and off the front edge of the mat. Turn up through the chest. Exhale, hands down, put the back knee down so we're back at a lunge facing the front of the room, sweep up through the chest, and then let's see if we can really get into the hips. So both hands inside the front foot, right foot is on the right edge of the mat, lengthen through the heart, and then just like we did earlier, we're going to try to thread the right armpit in front of the right shin. So walk the hands out. Your hands will be on the fingertips wider than the boundaries of the mat. So you're on the floor. Lengthen through the heart. Now keep this. Roll the shoulder blades more to the back of the heart and lift the back knee. Lift the toes on the front foot and pull back from the front knee into the pelvis. Kind of like you're pulling the right hip towards the left heel. Take a deep breath in and curl forward through the heart. One more breath. Exhale. Gently come all the way out. So even though this is a strenuous sequence, there's still we want there to still be room for grace and gentleness and reflection. Inhale, left leg to the sky. 
Exhale, step through between the hands. And we're setting up for our pyramid pose first. So turn the back toes out, heels down. Lift the toes on the front foot. And so this is part of the foundation for triangle. It's as if there's an accelerator and you're accelerating into the left foot. Stretch through the leg. The knee is tracking straight forward. Keep all that. So that's sort of this, the leg alignment is actually a prerequisite for the playfulness of going out to the right. So if it doesn't feel like you can keep the front leg in alignment and the knee pointing straight forward, just stay forward. So if you can, we're gonna walk the hands to the right. Keep tracking the inner thigh, front leg rolling forward. Plant the left hand, inhale, reach the right arm to the sky. One more inhale, just find your wings and stretch from the heart. Down through the down arm and up through the top arm. Exhale, top arm comes down. Inhale, left arm to the sky. So the heart's turning open more towards the front edge of the mat now. Keep shifting the center of gravity into the back leg. So it's gonna to wanna to dump into the front leg, but lift from the inner back thigh and push powerfully up into the outside of the back hip. Inhale, lengthen through the heart. Exhale, hands come down. And let's do our regular triangle. So the left hand comes down somewhere. And of course I love using blocks. So if you need a block under the hand, great. Or if you want to come up to the shin, it's all powerful. Turn your chest towards the sky. Extend the top arm all the way overhead. One more breath, just be in the hum, the full aliveness of your breath. Awakening the vitality of the body through the way that you're breathing. Exhale, through the way that you're creating each moment and the poses. So turn the back heel up, widen your front foot. So go to that lunge and I'm putting the back knee down to help set up, but you can. we're gonna lift the back knee as the last piece. Lengthen through the heart, get as tall as you can here. And then walk forward, see if you can snuggle your left armpit in front of the left shin. Same thing with the right side. And then the shoulder blades pull onto the back as a tool to move the left knee back and the left hip back. So once you get that alignment, you can flatten the palms Keep pulling the left thigh bone back in space. Lift the back knee. Now as the front thigh continues to, continues to pull back, stretch forward through the heart, curling the front of the chest more and more forward with each inhale. Like you're having the feeling of cobra pose right here. Ripple into it. One more inhale. Elongating from the chest. Exhale. Back knee comes down. Crawl the hands back in. Slide the front leg back. Let's lower all the way down. Shoulder blades onto the back. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, child's pose. Mm. 
Inhale, roll to seated. So we're near the back of the mat, seated. Okay, so what we've been working towards is the elements that we need to do a hand um, a balancing on the hands pose where the knee goes over the shoulder. So we've done a lot of stuff to get the hips open. We've also sort of foreshadowed putting weight into the hands and lifting up in our plank pose practice. And honestly, it's been a long time since I've done this, but I think that's more reason to just be playful with whatever comes out of this adventure. So all that being said, I'll walk you through step by step. So let's go to down dog. I truly don't know how this is gonna go. So if you feel that way too, you're not alone. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Now what we're gonna do on an exhale is come forward to plank and bring the left knee to the outside of the left shoulder. So it's gonna, it's not the elbow, but the shoulder. Try to stick it into the armpit. Step back to down dog. Same thing, other side. It's a beautiful way to condition for the full pose. Right leg to the sky. Exhale, plank. So we start with the elbow, or you can even start with the wrist. Knee to wrist, knee to elbow, or knee to the outer shoulder. What muscles need to turn on for you to get to the shoulder? And inhale, press into the earth, step back. All right. That went okay, because I'm still alive. <laughs> so let's keep going. Feel free to repeat that piece. Inhale. Um, I'll add on to it. Lift the left leg to the sky. It's gonna be a big juicy child's pose coming after all this, by the way, too. So hang in there. Come forward to plank. Outer shoulder to the inner knee. Plant the toes for a moment. See if you can shove the knee higher up to the armpit. From there, kick the left foot forward. Bend your elbows and lower into a low push-up. Inhale, back knee comes down. Whew. Step back to down dog. So this is one of those sort of harsh awakenings where we realize if you don't work out, it goes away so fast. It's not fair, but that's life. Inhale, reach the right leg to the sky. All right, remember, outer armpit, fly forward. So you're already feeling light. Above the elbow, get to the shoulder. Shift the weight forward. Shove the knee even higher, sticking into the outer shoulder and kick the leg forward. From there, bend the elbows, making a shelf with the right elbow for the right leg to float on, and then stretch out through both heels. Exhale, back knee comes down, step back, as promised, child's pose. Inhale, come up to seated. We'll do a brief stretch for the wrists, since we did a lot of weight bearing on the wrists. So take the right hand forward, pointing the fingers down, and then with your left hand, you're gonna hang on to the middle finger and ring finger and gently pull.
pull those fingers towards the inner edge of the wrist. Relax the shoulders down the back and stretch forward through the right forearm, through the front of the wrist. Release, give it a little shake. Let's do the other side. Left hand forward, ring and middle finger pointing down and then pulling those two fingers in. Do it just right so that it feels, we want this to feel delicious, like a, a relief and neutralizing, cleansing moment for the wrist. That depends on the foundation as always, which in this case is the shoulders. So if your shoulders are at the ears, we're not gonna feel much. So exhale the shoulder blades onto the back. And then from that relaxed place, extend through the bones of the left arm out through the front of the wrist. A little shake. Stand on the knees on an inhale, tuck the toes. Take the hands into this sort of like tray. You have serving trays in each hand. Elbows come in close to the side ribs. Scoop the tailbone and fill up. So you're fully inflating from the front body. It's kind of like a big dramatic like, oh wow. It's like the true body language of exhilaration here. So the trays. Inhale, it's like a miracle just happened in the body, or it's like we're experiencing a miracle and this is the feeling of it in the body, like, oh, I never expected that. So good, from there, so that's the feeling we're leading into. So inhale, miracle, up through the chest. Lift up, and then one hand at a time. So either the hands go for camel to the back of the waist, or maybe you can take the hands to the heels. If that works out, scoop the tail, lift up through the chest and lean back into it. As long as the neck is comfortable. Keep drawing from the source of that feeling of like an unexpected good fortune on each inhale, filling you up. So you're letting in a blessing into the cells of the body, something that is going well for you that you didn't even expect. One more breath. Inhale, lift the head so the chin is level. And from there, inhale, fill into the back ribs to float up evenly back to that position with trays in your hands. Fill up through the back ribs. Exhale, down dog. forward. We're going to hop through and go right into boat pose. So however you can make that transition, have fun with it. Just make sure it's, it's a part of your day that you can connect to joyfully. So meet me here. We're in boat pose. The legs are up, extended, lift up from the low back into the front of the heart. Extend the arms in line with your spine overhead. And then on an exhale, bring the hands in prayer straight forward and tuck the knees to the outside of the right elbow. 
So we're in this sort of twisting boat pose. Flex the toes, lift the shins all the way to parallel with the ground. And we're gonna go back and forth a couple times. So inhale, shoot up, and exhale. Left elbow, right knee, hug it in. All right, a couple more times each side. Inhale, boat. Now let's go above the elbow. So you gotta get up there. See if you can tuck, even take a moment, cheat, bring your left hand to the left thigh and scoot more of the arm past the knee. Big breath here. Shins parallel with the earth. Inhale, last one. And exhale. So hook it and then squeeze it in a little bit more cheating and pulling it across. Palms in prayer, gaze back. Big breath in. Inhale, unwind. Exhale, bend the knees. Feet hips width apart, hips up, reverse table. Inhale, draw the left knee in reverse table, keep the hips up into the heart. Stretch it straight forward. And like you're reaching for something, you're gonna turn a doorknob that's just off the front edge of the mat with your toes. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, hips almost come to the ground. Left knee comes to the forehead. Two more like that, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I believe in you, we're gonna do the other side before we stop. Here we go. Inhale, hips up, right leg, knee in, stretch it straight out. And then exhale, you can rest, rest the weight of the hips on the ground, but try not to. Knee to forehead, inhale, exhale. Best one yet, inhale. Exhale. Okay, hips come down. Happy baby, roll into your back. Grab the outside edges of the feet. Rock a little side to side. Most of the time, and this is after 20 years of yoga practice, the most important thing to me is being able to be a channel. So I'm constantly receiving information, experiences, good and bad and awful and everything, right? It gets stuck in your body. So the practice of yoga to me is just about opening the drain and being able to compost and sort of exhaust the stuff that's making me feel heavy, making me feel just like I don't have, um, you know, we'll just leave it at heavy. Bend the knees a lot, bring the soles of the feet together and open your knees. So this is how we reclaim the ability to decide what we're holding in our bodies. That's the most important thing. So the poses that you create along the way, that's not as important. The mental blocks are much worse than the physical ones anyway. So we gotta, we gotta address those. Okay. Knees together, big breath in, and exhale, knees to the right. <sighs> Put the right hand over the left knee, the knees are just stacked here, and then take the left arm and reach it over the back edge of the mat, and then it's kind of like a snow angel feeling, you're, or like a sundial, you're opening up through this arm. tracing sort of a crescent shape that 
takes you all the way out, reaching to the left side. Cherish that moment at the end of the exhale. The moment where your belly completely shrivels up like a raisin gets wrinkly, expelling every last drop. It's a new beginning. Inhale, unwind. Let's do the other side. So the knees just kind of hang out, staying together, and they fall to the left. Put the left hand over the knees, keeping them stacked. And then a sundial or a crescent or snow angel, however you want to connect to the idea. The arm, the right arm goes overhead off the back edge of the mat and opens all the way across. It's a sweet moment of emptiness, the end of the exhale. that sweet exhale moment. Don't let it end too soon. See if you can really get to know it. to Shavasana, so extending the legs, releasing the arms, I think it's always important to mention if you have a, a head covering or a mound of hair or something at the back of the head, Take that out so that the back of the head can really let go. And you can lead yourself into a Shavasana by mentally receiving a, a massage. So the fingertips are just tracking through your scalp on every little side, like you're finger painting and you don't want to miss a single spot all around the back and the sides and the top of the head. Maybe getting a little more vigorous. You got to just follow what feels good here. So for me, I'm getting in there with my fingernails. Stimulating blood flow to the scalp. You can even think about, so your skull actually has many bones, acranial bones, and there is movement. 
in the bones of your scalp. So your scalp actually, uh, your skull breathes. That's kind of the, the idea with your craniosacral therapy and craniosacral fluid. It's breathing on the inside of your skull. So you can think of this work leading you into Shavasana as just kind of like acknowledging that there's movement there, that sometimes there can be blockages. And that you can be willing to try to release your mental blocks. Let's drift towards stillness. Allowing your body to breathe itself. I think the more in your daily life you feel like you've been trying to force things or control things, the more important it is to practice releasing your grip here. Really allowing yourself to let go and be carried by the earth underneath you. Observing one more cycle of breath. Just witnessing every detail. Allowing that wave of breath to transport you to a peaceful, a peaceful memory. keep that memory within us as the fingers and toes start to awaken with little movements, stretching the arms overhead, bending the knees, releasing onto the right side. Take one final moment here, seated. Closing the eyes and just noticing the ways in which you feel washed out. 
just in the, in the very best way. If you enjoy this practice, please like this video and subscribe. And I can't thank you enough for sharing this experience with me. Namaste. Mm -hmm.